A very good morning to you all. Uh, it's a beautiful Monday morning. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we will be beginning our program momentarily as uh, you could see from the shared screen. Um, we're really excited. Um, we have a great uh, keynote address, but then again, we have a really good panel. Uh, we should be starting at exactly um, right about now, I am simply confirming everybody is there. This is really good. Um, so my name is Blandina Kilama and I am a moderator this morning. We're really happy to have um, Stephen Chacha as our keynote uh, address. And then later on, we have a really great uh, panel. I hope all of you are excited to hear from them. And importantly, um, today, um, we also are going to see that we have more time for you to ask questions. So Pilot for Development, um, for Research and Development is organizing these dialogues. We started with the first one on the 10th where we're on mining. Today, we're talking on SDGs. And then on the 31st, we will talk about uh, youth development. So ladies and gentlemen, for you to understand what Pilot for Development is, I know I will welcome uh, Donati to say a word, but while he does that, um, I see we really have uh, a lot of participants joining in now. I'm going to encourage you to introduce yourselves in the chat room, just go there, state your name and the institution you're from, and we can uh, continue from there. All right, some of you are saying you cannot hear me. If you cannot hear me, please type that in the chat box, then I improve my mic. Can you guys hear me? Yes, I do. Okay, okay, so people can hear me. Okay, fantastic, great, thanks. Okay, um, so I'm sorry, I'll try and uh, chat with you on the, on the side, uh, the person who is having issues, or Bram, if you can help him, uh, can you help us with him? That would be great. Um, so without further ado, as I said, uh, we're really looking forward to great discussions and we have a great um, uh, keynote and a great uh, panel. Uh, allow me to welcome Donati so that you understand where we're from. What I'm going to ask is all of us to switch off our mics and also switch off our video, except for our speakers. And if a speaker, if your mic and video, if your mic is a little bit on the lower bandwidth, we will ask you to switch off also uh, your video. Uh, Donati Karibu. Okay, um, looks- I'm, I'm, I'm representing Donat. Okay, um, Hadi, yes, please. I'm Hadi Disabili okay. from IMED. Um, um, I'm representing Donat. Uh, he has some issues to, to attend. Um, basically, we are representing the pilot for research and dialogue project. And, um, this project uh, has a number of global objectives. Uh, firstly, the project aims to promote dialogue on economic resources, policy, and the fiscal governance in Tanzania. But also, the project aims at uh, creating a platform for sustainable dialogue, including public and private stakeholders in different regions. As you can remember, uh, on 10th, we had a dialogue on um, uh, prospects of private sector. Um, today, we are conducting a dialogue on um, the SDGs. And um, on 31st, we we'll have another dialogue on uh, youth opportunities. But more specifically, the project aims to promote and disseminate 
high quality uh, evidence based research on policies, resources, and economic and physical governance. But also, the project uh, want to nurture the culture of debate among stakeholders from public, private, and civil societies on various economic and physical governance issues, especially engagement with uh, government stakeholders. But also, the project aims to increase research capacity and expand the link, and network, and connection among different actors of economic governance uh, uh, and research institution in Tanzania. Um, the key partners of the project are um, Tampere University from Finland. We have our project leader here, uh, uh, but also we uh, another partner is Pilot4. Uh, they are based in Brussels, and we have the uh, Institute of Management and Entrepreneurship Development, IMED. They are based here in Dar es Salaam. And we have COWI. Um, they are based in uh, 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 Copenhagen, Denmark. And the project is co-founded by European Union. So that was a, uh, a, a small introduction about the project. Blandina? Thank you so much uh, for that kind uh, um, introduction. And I think with that, um, it was, uh, I think it's a good way for everybody to know. And you mentioned quite a number of our colleagues that who are also joining us from um, um, outside uh, Dar es Salaam. Um, it's really been great putting this together. And as I said uh, before, uh, we will be um, having a keynote address uh, from Chacha, and we will have a great uh, panel thereafter. So without further ado, in as much as we have, we're really on time and I'm really happy about it, I will continue to encourage you all, kindly do introduce yourself on the chat box, tell us your name and the organization you're from, and we shall um, continue. And I hope we will have sufficient uh, time for questions. I encourage you to switch off your mic and your video. Um, next up, I'm going to call upon um, uh, Stephen, uh, Chacha, who is going to make a presentation uh, this morning, giving us our keynote address when it comes to SDGs. Um, Stephen works for uh, the Data Lab, but also he will say a little bit about himself before he starts his presentation. Steve, the floor is yours. Um, thank you, Bandina. Um, a very good morning to you all. Good morning. Um, before you proceed, do you want me to share your presentation or you're going to do it from my end? Um, I'll do it from my end. Um, okay, fantastic. Think, Great. I think you can, yeah. You can All right, see yes, you can. Screen. Go ahead. Sure. So, yes, um, as introduced, my name is um, Stephen Chacha, um, a co founder um, of the Tanzania Data Lab. Um, and Africa Philanthropy Foundation, um, which are both, you know, local um, non-government organizations um, here in Tanzania. Um, and through Africa Philanthropy Foundation, I'm also the co-convener of the Tanzania Sustainable Development Platform, uh, which is a civil society and non-state actors platform um, to organize and coordinate along the SDGs um, implementation in Tanzania. Um, so to, this morning, I'm going to take you through um, Take you through. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I'm going to take you through um, a presentation um, that's basically going to cover the background um, to the SDGs um, and the implementation of SDGs um, globally, um, regionally, and locally. Um, and also look into challenges uh, to date, um, and also uh, and, and recommendations in line with the SDGs implementation. Um, in Tanzania, regionally, um, and globally. Um, as we all know, um, the Global Development Agenda framework is um, in southern and the implementation 
Uh, and basically, the way that MDGs were uh, initiated was by the uh, Tecmo team um, during uh, times of Kofi Annan. Um, they came together and decided the, you know, the world should have a common um, global development agenda, um, you know, focusing on developing countries, um, aiming at, you know, reducing poverty by half uh, when we get, you know, to 2015. Um, so this framework had eight goals, um, as I seen there, um, 21 targets um, and 60 indicators. Um, and as I said, um, these goals were mainly implemented in developing countries um, to enable the developing countries to be able to achieve you know, development, but as well with the main focus of actually reducing poverty you know, by half. So when the MDGs or Millennium Development Goals came to an end in um, the global development community came together um, and started uh, deliberations on what should be the next global development. Uh, the idea um, of coming up with the sustainable development goals um, actually came out of the 2012 um, uh, which more or less set the footing for the need for a global sustainable development agenda. Um, and uh, from that point in time, it was proposed um, to be a successor framework um, to the Millennium Development Goals. Um, but then the consultations and negotiations took a bit of time up to September you know, 2015 uh, to finally endorse and adopt um, the Sustainable Development Goals. So the key difference between these two development um, um, frameworks is the fact that the first one, the Millennium Development Goals, um, started within um, the UN system. So it was a top down approach, more or less. Um, rather, um, the SDGs um, started with the countries. Um, the countries were requested um, through um, their ongoing you know, development strategies and agendas at the local level to propose what they consider to be the priorities that should be included um, in a global development framework or agenda. Um, and each country, including Tanzania, we had our own local consultations here. Um, and consolidated what we consider to be our priorities in line with the Tanzania Development Initiative 2025 and the five year development plan two um, that we're implementing or about to implement you know, at that point in time um, and submitted them as our priorities um, for, uh, for the global development you know, framework. So after um, over two years of consultations and negotiations, um, then these 17 goals as a senior, uh, 169 targets, and about 230 indicators uh, were endorsed um, as part of the 2030 agenda uh, for sustainable development, uh, which includes um, the sustainable development goals. Uh, but one thing that we have to know uh, is how this um, global development agenda of SDGs are linked uh, with the other you know, continental and regional um, you know, agendas. So um, there was a very good um, timing um, Incidents um, when the SDGs were actually developed, it was when um, the African Union I just came out from adopting you know, development um, for the region. Uh, was formally endorsed um, in the year 2013. Um, so the African Union also came up with the Africa Common Position on what should be, um, um, you know, what, what is the Africa priorities for inclusion in the global development you know, framework, meaning in the Agenda 2030 um, and the SDGs that were being negotiated and formulated uh, by the UN at that point in time. So as we speak at the moment, um, the African Union Agenda 2063 influenced the SDGs um, up to 70%. So 70% of the content within the SDGs were actually influenced by the African Union you know, um, common position um, on Agenda 2063. Um, and, and, and the way this is implemented, so meaning um, the African Union is implementing the SDGs mainly through um, the African Union Agenda 2063 um, um, framework, which is the main vehicle for implementation um, of the Africa Development um, Agenda um, in the continent. And now this trickles down to our regional economic communities. So in East, Af you know, in, in East Africa um, community, we have our you know, East African Community Vision 2050. Uh, which also complements or contributes to realizing the African Union Agenda 2063. Um, and also directly um, contributes toward um, the implementation and realization of the Sustainable Development Goals. 
Um, now, it's also true those down to the national level. Um, uh, as I said, the area where we actually implement our designated vision 2025, um, and now being implemented through the five years um, development plans. Um, at the moment, we are completing our five year development plan two um, and moving um, into five year development plan three. Um, so, for the country, um, the national development um, plans are the main um, implementation vehicles um, you know, for both the SDGs but also um, for the African Union Agenda 2063 and for the Zafra Community Vision 2050. So I wanted to make this um, linkage very clear so that we understand how these goals are actually, and these agendas, both you know, regional, continental, and global, are actually being implemented um, in Tanzania. Um, so the localization um, of these agendas within Tanzania, is, as I said earlier, is done through the Tanzania Development Vision and it's um, the five-year, you know, the woman, you know, in it, within it. Um, so this was done um, for the five-year development plan two, which is ending, and this current is also currently being done for the five-year development plan three, which is currently under So in terms of alignment um, of these goals um, to the five-year development plan two, um, in line with the different, um, you know, four we we'll see uh, we have a, a number of goals, um, you know, following under growth focus interventions, goals focusing under, you know, following under human development interventions, and also um, other goals, you know, following under intervention for uh, creating an enabling environment and for enhancing implementation effectiveness um, um, under the five year development plan, too. Um, uh, Steve, Steve, one second. Um, I was just wondering, um, there is a um, some voice, um, not even an echo behind your voice. I'm not sure what it is. Can you improve your mic, Steve? Or is it the headphones? I'm not sure what it is. Um, could be the headphones. Um, let me try to increase the volume. Okay. Okay. Is it better now? Um, your voice, uh, not yet. Right, to stop using that for them and see. Is it better now? Uh, a little bit, but not yet. Uh, speak again, sorry. Is it better? Okay, um, uh, members can write on the chat if it's okay, because I've, I've received some comments about the voice on my I'm direct sorry. line. Yeah, um, maybe you can proceed. I'm not sure what it is. Sure, sorry for that. So yeah, so... Um, it, it, it's still the same, but it's fine. Just continue if we can't do much about it. Sure, thanks. All right. So yeah, so um, the same was done um, for the Impusa 3, uh, which is being implemented uh, you know, um, in, Zanz in Zanzibar. Um, and um, the diagram you see in front of you um, shows how the different goals actually falls under the different key that areas and um, those are three uh, which is being implemented um, in Zanzibar. Um, for the case of the five-year development plan three, uh, which is currently, you know, um, under development, um, the focus is on again streaming the SDGs into um, the different um, thematic areas and priorities um, of the five-year development plan three. Um, as we can clearly see, um, the focus again is on competitiveness, industrialization and services, um, trade and inclusive, um, you know, um, development. Um, and is very much also um, trying to mainstream and integrate um, the, you know, the ambitions and aspirations um, of the SDGs um, into um, these different areas of the five-year development plan three um, um, framework um, that is currently, you know, under under. You know, development. Um, as, and as we all know, um, the SDGs are mainly um, aimed to be a transformational, um, you know, agenda um, and that really is, a, you know, leads to transformation in people's lives, um, but as well um, focusing on bringing together the three dimensions of sustainability, um, meaning economic, um, social, and environmental dimensions of, you know, sustainability together so that uh, we implement economic growth but at the same time um, achieve social equity 
uh, and um, enhance environmental protection um, in the development that we actually we are actually delivering. But as well, um, also grounded with uh, uh, with an ambition to ensure that we do not leave anyone behind um, in implementing and realizing um, these goals um, through the different uh, you know frameworks that we are actually um, um, you know implementing the goals with. So for the, again, for Tanzania, um, these five-year development plans are the main implementation vehicles. Um, that these goals are going to be implemented um, through. And, and as we know, the way our um, planning um, um, involvement um, is being delivered in the country, so from um, the 501 Plan 3, we'll be having um, sector um, strategic plans um, that will be implemented by the ministries, you know, um, government departments and agencies, uh, meaning that at the central government level. Um, and when we go, um, um, you know, lower that to the local government authorities, um, we are also um, going to be having the regional strategic plans, uh, which are the plans, you know, for each of the regions um, to implement development uh, within the regions in line with the five-year development plan three, but also the SDGs uh, implementation at the regional level are supposed to be mainstreamed uh, within the regional um, strategic plans. And below that, we have the district strategic plans, um, that are also going to be the main vehicles um, for implementation of the 501 Plan 3 framework, but as well the system development goals, you know, at the subnational level uh, within the country. Um, in terms of the successes, um, you know, so far um, at the global level um, and, and, and regional level um, in, this, in our processes, um, so far um, five DNR sessions uh, or high level political forum sessions have been, been held um, at the UN level. Um, and also at the same time, we'll be having um, after regional forum self developments by the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, um, together with the African Union you know, Commission um, and the African Development Bank. Um, and those are the different kind of titles um, or themes um, that they've been um, focused you know, in the last. Um, five high level political forum um, um, sessions that have been held so far. Um, and as of now, we already have 177 countries which have already um, submitted or reported um, the VNLs, um, including Tanzania, uh, which reported um, in the year 2019 um, for the first time um, presenting the National for International Review um, report um, at the high level um, political forum. And, and the way the reviews are organized um, is mainly through the international reviews, meaning the national reports that the you know, countries are showing um, you know, the status um, but also the regional review processes, uh, as I said earlier, through the African Region of Sustainable Development, and the African Union Commission, uh, but also the thematic reviews um, that are conducted um, in line with the different kind of themes that are prioritized um, for the respective you know, year of the review um, um, under, under the UN um, you know, structures. Um, and at the same time, we have the annual allocated forums that are you know, appear every July um, at the UN um, to um, host the global review process um, um, for the sustainable government goals. Uh, but as well, every after four years, um, the you know, allocated you know, forum um, convenes of the, you know, the UN General Assembly um, for the SDG Summit um, to be able to take stock of the progress made in every four years um, of the implementation um, of the goals um, at the global level, at regional level, and also um, at national level. So in, in terms of uh, the work that has been done in the country so far, um, Tanzania started in the right footing by actually doing the national baseline um, to understand where the country is and also um, the national data gap assessment to understand you know, how the five year development plan two um, targets and indicators are actually aligning with the sustainable development goals, you know, um, and also identifying areas where we actually do have data to measure progress um, in the SDGs implementation and areas where we actually do not have data. Um, this assessment was actually done by the DLAB um, together with the National Bureau of Statistics um, um, in Tanzania using the advanced data um, gap assessment tool um, that is um, being um, you know, um, promoted um, by Paris 21. Um, and also um, in the year 2019, as I said, we did the voluntary national review report for the country, uh, which was a very key milestone for Tanzania. 
in terms of actually one, be able to bring the different mass stakeholders you know, together um, um, to discuss um, um, the, you know, the SDG, the coordination framework, um, and the progress that has been made in the country you know, so far. Um, but it also offered opportunity for other non stake actors, including civil organization, to as well be able to produce um, um, our schedule report um, on how we are seeing, you know, the SDGs being implemented um, in the country um, through, you know, the civil society, you know, perspective or eyes. Um, um, and um, it ended up being a very useful, um, you know, process in bringing together different stakeholders um, in the implementation of the sustainable development goals in the country. Um, and as, as well, um, in the year 2019, um, and, um, and, 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 and in the early 2020, we finalized um, um, the country report um, on the implementation of the African Union you know, Agenda 2063, um, which is a, you know, is a um, really showing how um, Tanzania is implementing this agenda as well, um, together with the Sustainable Development Goals um, through the Tanzania Development Vision 2025 um, in the country. Um, on the other side as well, um, we have witnessed a number of initiatives um, coming out um, as a result of um, the SDGs implementation in, in the country, including the initiation of the Tanzania Sustainable Development Platform, uh, which I introduced earlier um, as a civil society and an asset actors. Um, you know, um, to coordinate and organize on civil society and asset state actors' efforts um, in the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals, um, the Africa Union Agenda 2023, and the National Development um, um, Agenda um, that is being implemented you know, in Tanzania. And I have my colleague um, on the panel um, who will speak a bit more about the work of the platform in a few. Um, but as well, uh, we saw um, uh, the Parliament of Tanzania launching the Parliamentary Group on Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, which uh, for us is a, I would say is a key achievement for the um, as during the MDGs um, era, um, the two main institutions that were sidelined, I would say, in the implementation of the MDGs uh, was actually the parliament and the local government. So I'm um, starting the SDGs implementation uh, with the parliamentary group on social development goals is a very key milestone for the country in ensuring that um, the parliament also plays a key role of oversight in ensuring that these goals are actually being implemented and realized um, you know, in Tanzania. Um, but well, the, through the DNR process, um, it was very clear um, that the country needed um, a national SDG coordination framework um, to be able to enable the different stakeholders to come together regularly um, to organize and coordinate on the SDGs in you know, and also the overall follow-up and review um, of the progress So this is a very um, new um, uh, framework, which was actually adopted in December um, this year. Um, and as you can see, um, it brings together um, the different kind of stakeholders um, that are involved um, in the SDG implementation, um, from the research and academia, um, national school, you know, authorities, civil society, ministries, departments and agencies, um, regional secretaries, and the local government authorities. Um, the private sector, you know, and development partners, um, you know, in the country um, to be able to work together um, to coordinate and organize um, um, the SDGs implementation um, in the country. So for us, I would say this is one of the key milestones that the country has achieved um, in this regard. Um, but in line with the, uh, the 2019 DNR report um, that the country um, presented um, to the UN, um, the, the country is doing very well um, in eight goals out of the 17 um, and goals that are within the SDG framework. And these eight goals are goal number two, um, zero anger, goal number three, good health, number four, college education, five, gender equality, number six, clean water, um, and sanitation, number eight, um, decent you know, jobs and economic growth, number 10, reduce inequalities, and 16, peace um, and, 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 and peace and justice and strong institutions. But as well, we're not doing so well um, in five goals to the 2019 VNR. These five goals are goal one, um, on poverty, goal 13 on climate action, um, goal 14 on life below water, and goal 15 on life on land, and goal 17 um, on partnerships. Um, and in terms of the key lessons learned um, and recommendation um, coming from the, um, how we, we've been implementing the SDG so far, 
Um, uh, it has become very clear that political commitment and leadership is key or crucial um, in achieving um, the realization of, of the SDG. I and mean, we're happy now through the national coordination framework um, and the, you know, the, the leadership of the you know, Prime Minister office into this um, is really going to um, make a lot of changes in how the SDGs are going to be implemented um, in, in the country. Um, the time of data, data continues to be a main challenge um, 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 in the SDGs implementation, as we actually do not have data for almost half of the SDGs um, that are, are being implemented. Um, and from the past experience of from the five year development plan one and five year development plan two, data was also a challenge. But on top of that, uh, monitoring evaluation and learning um, is also one of the very key limitations that even the government itself is admitting um, uh, that has been the case in the implementation of the five year development plan two and five year development plan, plan one. So there's a lot of work um, that is currently underway to ensure that we improve um, the data availability, including um, tapping into new sources of data, such as you know, satellite data, um, you know, civil society data, um, private sector data, to be able to complement on the gaps um, that are there. Also big data um, sources um, currently being utilized um, to fill in the gaps. Um, and for example, we seriously have data gaps on certain you know, you know, goals, for example, environmental goals. Um, goal 13, goal 14, uh, goal 15 uh, um, are one of the you know, goals that we seriously have you know, huge data gaps in those areas. And these other modern um, data sources um, um, are really what are going to help us to fill in the, some of the gaps that we actually have in, have in there. Um, but also, um, together with the, uh, the National SDG Coordination Framework, uh, there's a still a bit of issues, I would say, around the coordination of three dimensions of sustainability. Uh, we still see a lot of emphasis on the economic and social um, side of things um, as comparing to environment, uh, you, know, uh, you know, dimension of sustainability. Um, so there's still a lot of work that has to go into, into the coordination to ensuring that the three dimensions um, of sustainability are actually being given equal weight um, in the implementation. Uh, we have issues on police coherence in the sense that um, some of our policies uh, um, uh, really do not match up with aspiration and ambition that is there in the sustainable development goals. So there's a need to um, do reviews of some of our policies in ensuring that they actually do match um, the aspiration and, you know, and ambition of the you know, sustainable development goals. Um, on the mass stakeholders and engagement, um, um, we have many you know, significant you know, strikes here, um, including the National SDG Coordination Framework that I just shared. Um, but again, uh, what we want to emphasize here is should not only remain on the structure and document, we really need to put into, into life in ensuring that um, um, it really functions and give you know, equal space and opportunity for the different stakeholders to engage um, um, in the process. Um, the submission implementation, um, um, again, is still a challenge. Um, and what we, we, we have learned is that without um, the regional strategic plans and the district strategic plans that are needed, um, it will be a bit tricky um, if that um, to implement the SDGs at that level. Um, and the problem that we're seeing is that most of these regions and districts do not actually bother to update or develop their you know, regional and district strategic plans. So there's a need for emphasis um, on the need for all regions and districts to develop um, their regional and district strategic plans. Um, financing is again um, um, a challenge, um, but um, 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 we are happy now to see the government through the five development plan three um, coming up uh, with non-traditional and innovative, you know, um, um, financing options, um, including things like municipal bonds, um, impact investing, diaspora bonds, and um, climate change funds, um, and other, you know, kind of innovative um, sources of financing that are needed. Um, all of this is important together with domestic resource mobilization that was highly you know, emphasized um, as part of the adversarial action agenda for financial development, but also um, the role of developed countries in fulfilling the ODA's uh, Office of Development Assistance you know, commitment is also key um, to enable countries like Tanzania um, to be able to realize the SDGs. Uh, also, we have an issue of technology and technical capacity, um, so we need to come up with mechanisms to facilitate technical transfer, and on the capacity in areas that um, countries, uh, developing countries like Tanzania uh, actually have significant gaps. 
so as to be able to enable them um, to deliver, um, um, you know, their sustainable development goals within the country. Um, you know, confident roles we have seen as a bit of an issue, you know, you know and a challenge in most of African countries. Um, I'll give an example of the Central African Republic, actually, which closed the 2015 um, deadline uh, for, the S, for, the, for the NDGs then uh, without achieving any of the NDGs. And it's mainly because of the conflict and wars uh, that have been going in that country. So we understand um, this is a very you know, serious issue that we should, we should also always keep on top of our heads. Um, whenever this conflict or wars you know, um, you know, emerge in any country, then there are really um, serious negative you know, effects or impact um, on the global agenda implementation. And again, uh, we have issues of natural disasters and global pandemics such as COVID um, that we experience at the moment. And already um, um, the cost of COVID into the SDGs in implementation is significant. Um, so these are the kind of issues that um, over time um, uh, we need to come up with um, mechanisms of strategies such, such as disaster reduction um, you know, strategies um, that were proposed uh, during the Sendai, you know, in, as part of the Sendai framework um, to ensure that our countries are prepared in, in addressing, facing and addressing um, both the natural disasters and the global, um, you know, pand pandemics that uh, based on the climate change and a lot of other, you know, um, you know, changes that are happening in the world are likely to be on the lives as we are, as we are progressing on. So I would like to um, stop there for now, and I'll be happy um, to take any questions and comments. Thank you, Manu. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Stephen. That was a really uh, great uh, presentation. You've taken us uh, through the historical understanding of the SDGs. And I think for us most, when we just start talking about the SDGs, we think about what we are seeing now. But I really like you took us through the top uh, down approach of MDG and how uh, involving the current uh, uh, SDGs have been. And I'm seeing quite a number of people who have been participating in different processes uh, who have joined in. And I'm really happy uh, to welcome you all uh, in our dialogue this morning. As you enter, kindly go to the chat room and do introduce yourself and the organization you're from. I really like also in your presentation, uh, Stephen, you took us through the link between the SDGs we have and how they've been uh, taken on board uh, by the government. And you showed how they were involved in the FYDP2 and importantly, what we are seeing or expecting to see in the FYDP3. Um, I also like the way you say the places uh, where we've seen we are doing well. I'm sure there will be a lot of questions. I also encourage you, if you have a question, also just drop it in the chat room uh, for now. I will pick only one or two questions uh, right now before we proceed. Uh, but then again, um, um, the challenge is that you not. Um, I like uh, the issues around, you know, climate. Um, you also, but before even going there, you said it seems like we're paying a lot of attention on the economic bits and the social bits, but then the environment bits, we're still lagging behind. And I like that you insist that it's not just Tanzania, but it's a global, it's a global uh, phenomenon. And um, I think um, also one thing that I pick a lot from your presentation is how uh, globally this review is being done and how important it is like the high level political forum that you kept talking about and how the VNR fit in it. And I like for the case of VNR, for the case of Tanzania, we had two documents, one coming from the government, but importantly, also the CSOs had their own um, um, initiative. And I think the members of the panel that we have, uh, you already highlighted, uh, perhaps uh, um, we will hear more from uh, Reynald. He will um, touch a little bit because he's also involved a lot in this. But then for the side of uh, Moyuma Hamza, I'm sure, uh, since you work with the Tanzania Women Chambers of Commerce, there are quite a number of initiatives that you guys are undertaking. It will be good to know. Uh, for you, Badru, I understand in as much as you're with Restless Development now and you're focusing more on youth, but before that you worked with companies, I think we're going to have a really good discussion. And last but not least, really happy to have uh, Mama uh, Bengi Isa with us. I understand they've just released a report showing um, 
what has happened up to uh, end of June last year with regards to the SDGs. I'm sure in her intervention, she can also touch on that. So what I'm gonna do is maybe just pick a question from the, from the chat room, uh, if there is any, um, okay, so I see you guys have discussed this, so this one I will drop, but now I'm going to ask you all to participate in a short poll, and I'm going to ask Bram to launch the poll before we continue. Thank you very much. We should be ending the poll momentarily. Okay, um, so thank you very much. What you can see, yes, we have people from different places, but most people are from Dar es Salaam. We also have from Zanzibar, uh, other Africa countries, and also other countries outside um, um, Africa. Um, most people are in the age range of 25 and 35, and we have more women. Interesting. Thank you so much, uh, everyone. Uh, and then with that, then um, allow me then to go into the next um, session. And with this particular session, what we're going to do now, I'm going to welcome the members of the um, panel. And to start us up, uh, we are happy to really, really have uh, Mojuma Hamza, who is with the Tanzania Women's of Chambers. Uh, Karim Bustana, Chambers of Commerce. I am sure you've heard um, um, Stephen and you have a, a lot uh, to share with us and you have about seven minutes to do that. Uh, Karim Bustana, um, what do you know? Thank you. Hi, hi, hello. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I hope everyone can hear me well. Yes, we can, and I'm just going to stop the screen share so that we can also see you. We can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad to be part of this panel discussion today. And uh, my name is Majuma. I work with Tanzania Women Chamber of Commerce. I'm the CEO, and uh, I'm happy to take part in this discussion to share a bit of what uh, TWCC is doing. In, uh, in relation to sustainable uh, development goals. I understand uh, that uh, uh, whatever we are doing in, on women economic empowerment is uh, about uh, supporting the implementation of sustainable development goals, all the 17 uh, goals. And we as a Women Chamber of Commerce, 
we work uh, mostly across to five uh, fifth uh, uh, goals. Number five goal, which is gender equality. Number 10, uh, which is reduce, relating to reducing inequalities. And number one, uh, which is no poverty. So as uh, Tanzania Women Chamber of Commerce is a apex organization which is working to empower women economically in Tanzania. And um, uh, we, we are a member-based organization. We have more than 6,000 uh, members across the countries. And then we work with women in all sectors. What we do is to empower them economically uh, through advocates. So we work very closely with the government uh, institutions, uh, private institutions, to make sure that all the policies uh, issued related to laws, regulations are taken care to make sure that they uh, provide a favorable uh, environment for women's business to grow. But also we build the capacity of women in different areas, including uh, how to start and manage their business, uh, but also uh, how to uh, do business in terms of uh, how to sustain the business that they have. But also we support them in, term of, in terms of uh, market access. Uh, we help them to build a network, but also we support them uh, to access information. So we post and uh, share information, the right information at the right time to our members. So uh, coming back to the uh, uh, topic of, uh, to the today topic, uh, then I will say uh, TWCC is working, uh, uh, TWCC's work is uh, directly uh, touching all the uh, 17 uh, SDG, uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And uh, as we work to empower women economically, we support them to make sure that we, every woman in this country have something to do to, to, uh, to earn income, to create a job, but also uh, to create employment. So you can see uh, as a, uh, SDG one, no poverty. Our aim is to make sure that uh, we leave no one behind in Tanzania as talking about women. And um, we all know that when we talk about poverty, we have to speak aloud about women. So when we want to eradicate poverty, then we have to start uh, with women. And then, um, uh, through uh, on gender equality, uh, SDG number five, it's our role and it's what we have been doing to support and to empower women and to ensure there is equality of on women's access to uh, political city uh, or rather uh, to be part of the to take part in different uh, leadership role, but also. We, to make sure that there is equality on uh, opportunities, women access to opportunities. Uh, but also we are working to ensure we, we reduce inequality, access to whatever uh, women have right to access in this country. Anyway, and that's why we do a lot of advocacy in different areas to make sure that women are, also are taking part in everything. Yeah, so for now, uh, I would like to end here, but I would like to hear more from participants in case they have questions, then I'll be able to uh, respond specifically on their questions. Thank you very much. That's really, uh, really good. I thank you so much, uh, Mwajuma. It's one thing when we're listening to Steve and he speaks about all this high discussion and for you to come in and just say, you know what, at uh, TWCC, what we do is simply advocate uh, for uh, access uh, to different uh, um, resources and um, um, a different, um, you build different capacities just to allow women to be able to do uh, different things. So we really, really uh, thank you so much uh, for that uh, short intervention. Uh, next up, um, Chacha, when you were making your presentation, you did refer to him, and this is Raymond. 
Rayland, I've been meeting you everywhere, you know, in Tanzania and abroad. And uh, I think your middle name should become um, like, you know, the SDG champion, just like Chacha. And I think I give you the flow. I'm sure the seven minutes are really short, but you can really try uh, and tell us, you know, from your work, um, when you're thinking about the progress that has been made in the SDGs, what really comes to your mind? I am going to pick questions from the chat room a little bit later, so please feel free to do that. I've seen quite a number of people uh, in the program. Um, if you want also to raise your comments, I do welcome you. Uh, Renant, you are up uh, next. Um, thank you. Sorry. Yeah, um, that's good. Sorry, you. apologies. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Blandina, for your introduction. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm thinking about changing my name to, 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 to SDGs champion. Um, my name is uh, Reynold uh, Maeda. I am the Secretary General. Uh, of the United Nations Association of Tanzania, but also co-convener of the Tanzania Sustainable Development uh, Platform. Um, when I think about uh, the success uh, of SDGs in Tanzania, what comes into my mind is um, the interventions that um, have been building up since uh, 2015 uh, up to now. So for me, um, I'm going to speak more about, um, from my side of uh, being a stakeholder, from uh, a stakeholder from the civil society. Uh, I'm going to build up from what Stephen uh, has said, but also come down into sharing uh, our experiences as uh, stakeholders uh, from civil society in, you know, in influencing this process uh, in Tanzania. So, uh, what we do is we mobilize for action for SDGs in the country. Uh, so my organization, United Nations Association of Tanzania, back in 26, 2015, 2016, uh, came together with uh, Stevens organization and we uh, came up uh, with uh, the Tanzania Sustainable Development Platform, which was a result of um, a meeting that was conducted between the two organizations, you know, to take stock of what uh, the implementation of SDGs had been, of MDGs, sorry, had been uh, since 2000 to 2015. And what came out was uh, the fact that there was no really uh, coordination of stakeholders during that time. So you, you could really not take uh, into account what the actual contribution of, you know, different stakeholders was during the M MDGs period. So the recommendation was to, you know, establish something that will, you know, bring together stakeholders and, you know, take into account what their contribution will be into the then post uh, 2015 development uh, agenda, which came to be uh, sustainable uh, development. So how uh, do we do that? So we have this Tanzania Sustainable Development Platform, which is a non-state non actors uh, platform, but mostly uh, civil society. We have more than 300 uh, uh, civil society members from uh, international uh, civil uh, NGOs to you know, uh, community-based uh, organization all over Tanzania, uh, mainland Tanzania and uh, uh, in the eyes of Zanzibar. Uh, what we've done since 2015 is uh, first, one of our major achievements was to, you know, coordinate uh, the civil society report during the VNR process, which was very uh, inclusive and different from what has been done before. So this for us, you know, in terms of defining uh, success, this was uh, a milestone for us. Uh, in, when you think about the SDGs uh, theme, leave no one behind. I think we've been, we, we had uh, uh, been to, we, have, we were largely successful uh, in that time because uh, the way we conducted the uh, civil society uh, 
consultations uh, in 17 regions with over 500 CSOs, you know, participating, all different groups, um, uh, all different groups uh, represented uh, in these consultations, which were divided into thematic uh, uh, consultations to ensure that no one is left behind. And a result is a great report uh, that was compiled by the Tanzania Sustainable uh, Platform, but with contribution from uh, 500 plus uh, CSOs. So for us, that defines success. But I can also speak about other interventions that we've been able to influence in the country. For instance, for the first time, uh, we have what we call the Tanzania Parliamentary, uh, Parliamentary Group on Sustainable Development. Um, this is a group that we started working and uh, you know, tried to influence its establishment from 2016. And it was launched by uh, Honorable uh, Speaker Job Nungai in November of 2018. And it's made of uh, 35 uh, parliamentarians who are SDGs champions within the parliament. So currently, it's just an interest group, just like you have the Women Caucus and the Youth Caucus. It's recognized by the parliament as an informal uh, group within the parliament. And we're working and hoping someday it's going to be uh, a formal uh, parliamentary committee. That's the goal. And uh, you know, there's interest on both ends to, to make this group, you know, a formal parliament, uh, parliamentary uh, committee. So for us, this also is success because now you have uh, SDGs being recognized and you have specific groups at the level of the parliament. And if you look at the theme of leave no one behind, you have parliamentarians. These are representatives of people. So our hope is that when they are passing and approving government you know, plans and budgets in the parliament, they're going to ensure that you know, the SDGs targets are taken into, taken into account. Uh, and we've seen great uh, you know, steady success from the previous parliament. We just started uh, uh, you know, inter, uh, like, uh, engagement with the new one uh, back in February. But you, from the previous years, just uh, under two years, you could see uh, their work within, you know, committees like social, uh, like their social uh, committees. You could see questions that they ask uh, in the committees. They are related to SDGs target. They ask uh, uh, questions and they inquire uh, progress of different SDGs within the you know, parliament. And you can even see in um, recently, it wasn't as vivid uh, before, but even in the uh, latest uh, uh, speech by uh, the Minister of Finance, you could see that there's a mention of the current, uh, you know, the next uh, annual development plan is uh, going to be, you know, contributing into the success uh, and implementation of SDGs. So for us, it's these little things, it's the alignment of uh, uh, government programs and plans with the SDGs and the local plans and the African, you know, Agenda 2063 and the East Africa, you know, uh, Vision 2050. And so for us, this, this counts as success because uh, if you look deeply, uh, there's nothing new. What we need is that the government and the development practitioners, you know, align uh, the SDGs to their programs so that we, we can be able to, to monitor. So um, I could also speak about um, the work that we're doing. Stephen mentioned the regional and district uh, plans uh, for local governments. This is also something that we are doing uh, with Tamisemi you know, to make sure that, that this regional district uh, plans, um, uh, strategic plans, uh, you know, reflect the SDGs, uh, you know, targets and uh, indicators so that we are able to monitor progress uh, come 2030. Uh, so this is work that we are also doing uh, with uh, Tamisemi. So right now we're in the process of developing a toolkit that will be used by, you know, regional uh, 
you know, the local government authorities when they're developing their strategic plans so that they're able to know how to uh, align, you know, their district uh, plans with, uh, with uh, SDGs and you know, other, you know, regional commitments such as uh, Agenda 2063. Um, also, you know, engagement of uh, direct engage community engagements with uh, groups such as uh, young people uh, and communities. So uh, my organization, uh, one of our big, uh, larger uh, target groups is youth. So what we do with youth is that we um, engage young people in high level national, you know, policy processes. And what we've been doing so far is we have been working uh, for the review of the national uh, youth development uh, policy of, 20, uh, of 2007. Uh, this is, uh, as you know, policy uh, development, policy processes uh, take quite a long time, but we have been doing uh, working with uh, the ministry, the Department of Youth at the Prime Minister's office since uh, 2017 to review the youth, uh, national youth development policy of, 20, of 2007. And we are part of the drafting committee for the policy. It's now stuck somewhere in the cabinet. We have no control of that, but we have, we ensure that uh, different uh, groups of young people got to engage and give recommendations during uh, the initial stages of drafting the policy. Uh, so far as we've done with the uh, review and producing of guidelines to, uh, you know, to uh, guidelines to, to, to uh, for the um, uh, guidelines to, uh, I'm trying to find the right English word. This is where you know English is not your first language. You but, can say uh, even in Swahili, maybe we'll, it will come also <laughs> to us. It's yes, okay. guidelines, Kuongoza, yeah. uh, uh, the, um, the um, provision of the district loans, you know, the 10% uh, loans for women, yeah, young yeah, people, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. Uh, people with disabilities. So the there were no guidelines, yes. the 10% yeah. loans. So we ensure that young people get into uh, uh, the table and uh, give recommendations on how uh, these guidelines should be. And currently, we're just waiting for them to be approved uh, by Tamisen. Uh, so that's what we've been doing, but also uh, engaging the people, the community. We've done a pilot uh, of what we call uh, the citizens report. And we just go to community and we conduct uh, surveys uh, on how they see the progress of SDGs, but using very simple language and things that they could identify with uh, from the community. So for instance, uh, things like uh, access to, uh, access to, uh, you know, social services such as, uh, you know, uh, what's the quality of classrooms and uh, what's the quality of, you know, uh, how do you access, you know, medical services from the local, you know, dispensary from, you know, so such kinds of questions, but we know how to align those to SDGs. And then we conduct feedback meetings uh, with the communities. We've done this uh, at, uh, in Dar es Salaam, we've done this at, in Tandika, like Temeke, we've done it um, in one place, uh, it's Shole Sembule, I think I'm pronouncing that right, in Kisarawe, and uh, some other place that I, it can come uh, to me very quickly, but it's really um, down at the community level. So uh, just, uh, I see a lot of questions popping up, but just uh, to finish this, for me, defining success of uh, SDGs, you know, really kind of wraps up into the willingness, you know, no matter how slow, but these progress we're making on both ends like uh, stakeholders and businesses are really, you know, now try starting to embrace SDGs. You can see the government is also embracing SDGs. Civil society and other uh, actors also 
uh, embracing and you know, uh, you know, aligning themselves with uh, SDGs. Um, I think I've utilized more than like seven minutes. Yeah, but it was really good because uh, you really shared as to how you actually uh, engage and uh, uh, the uh, youth and importantly, how you've really worked together to align some of the issues. What I like from both uh, your presentation, but also from what uh, Mwayuma also said, because she started with women. Um, I'm sure if we bring Mwayuma back and then she can say the type, the type of support that they're offering to human, to women. It's not like a one size uh, fits all, because uh, I believe in the Tanzania Women Chambers of Commerce, they have all kind of different businesses. It's the same thing when I'm listening to you about the youth, you're already showing uh, the youth that you're engaging with in the urban areas. I'm sure I've just noted there's somebody from Makete in the group. If you go to Makete, you're going to have different engagement. You already said you went to Kisarawe. Um, that's already uh, showing when we're speaking about um, um, the SDGs, they're not as far as just how we present them. And I think uh, Fatma Fungo, you spot on um, on the chat room saying, hey, um, you're talking a lot about the youth, but it's quite possible, uh, quite a number of things that we're raising here, even some of the youth are not aware of. So really, I'm really happy with the pilot uh, for research and development for organizing such a dialogue. At least people get to know that these things do exist and how, like we've heard from the keynote address, how actually they are being embedded in the different uh, policies that we have in the country. Up next is the mama I admire a lot because of the work she has been doing over the years. And importantly, now she heads the a National Economic Empowerment um, um, Mama Bengi Isa, we're really happy you've joined us. Um, I said, um, I, I got this report very recently and it's talking about uh, some of the things um, that have been implemented in the SDGs. I am sure uh, you got in your seven minutes of intervention uh, when you're talking about the progress of SDG. When we speak about empowerment, we are looking at you and I'm sure uh, people would love to hear from you and your views. I'm encouraging everybody else to continue asking questions in the chat uh, room, but then importantly also, if you have not done so, please do introduce yourself. Uh, Mama Bengi, is, uh, the floor is yours. Hello, Blandina. Uh, thank you very Hi. much. I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, I've been listening to, to you all since morning. Uh, I think it's a very good meeting. Uh, I would like to start with uh, SDG number nine and 10 on inclusive growth, uh, economic growth and inclusiveness. Uh, in Tanzania, it's true we've made a lot of progress, especially on uh, economic infrastructure. Uh, economic infrastructure in terms of uh, electrification, uh, things like rural electrification, uh, as well as rural water, access to water. We've also been able to do a lot in construction of roads, railway, uh, transportation services, and as well as uh, communication. In communication, for example, we, we access to communication for Tanzanians we are accessing for more than 95% of Tanzanians can access mobile uh, communication through mobile phones. Uh, but the other thing which is very good is that we, we, we as a National Economic Empowerment Council in, in economic infrastructure, we make sure that uh, involvement of Tanzanians in whatever that we do is done. So for all institutions that are implementing these about the above things that I've mentioned on a rural electrification, on water, access to water, roads, uh, co construction of roads, railways, and communication. We make sure that uh, we track down the employment of Tanzanians, um, access to our companies, how they, they are being involved in you know, working with uh, in the different projects, as well as making sure that uh, 
we have uh, we, we, the, the, all the projects, they obtain goods from, from within the country. Uh, programs such as rural electrification, for example, we now purchase all uh, equipment from Tanzania, from the, uh, from the, the meters and the, the, from the nguzo ambazo zinatumika kwenye on those uh, infrastructure for electricity. Uh, coming to access to finance. Access to finance, we have made a lot of progress because we've now, we, we now have uh, the, the law which is guiding us in micro, national microfinance in Tanzania. So we know that more than 10 million people were involving themselves with Vicoba and those uh, economic financial groups from the community level. But we didn't have the law. And this law actually is going to improve a lot of things because uh, first of all, they are going to be registered, but uh, not only that, they are also going to be monitored how they are doing their businesses. Uh, we, we are going to use the same facilities to make sure that we strengthen the way they work and how they're involving people and the access to finance through community groups need to be actually, they, they need to be something that can help or strengthen people's lives economically. But not only that, we, we have been able to set up guidelines for uh, microfinance, uh, financial institutions such as banks to have uh, friendly products for these groups uh, uh, in, in various areas. You remember maybe five years ago, we had, we had, we, we had very uh, few banks who were working directly with the community groups, but now every bank has a, has a product which is conducive to, the, to these groups. Uh, coming to SGD5, uh, before we go to SGD5, let's talk about SGD8. Uh, whereby cu currently in our country, we are implementing a strategy or approach, which we call it local content, to make sure that Tanzanians are involved in various activities, especially investments that are working, we are doing in our country. And uh, in doing this, we've been able, we, we've been very successful because as I said before, we have coordinators who are, looking at empowerment issues in every sector. So in every ministry, every institution, in every region, in local government authorities, they are there. And they know their work, they know that they have the terms of reference and they've been trained. The most important thing here is to make sure that we implement local content in everything that we do. That means we have to think about Tanzanians, how we, Tanzanians can benefit from, from whatever that we do. In local content for all projects that are being implemented in the in our country, projects such as SGR, uh, uh, Mwalim Nyerere Hydropower Project, uh, mining, uh, mining projects going on in our country, rural electrification, water projects, and so on and so forth. We've been able to have employment of about 50,000 people in those projects who are Tanzanians. But uh, the other thing is uh, involvement of our companies. Our companies from Tanzania, they are now accessing work in these projects as subcontractors. And this is very important because actually gives them opportunity to learn new things, the way to do different projects with new companies from outside, and also to have a discipline of working in these projects. But uh, not only that, uh, we make sure that our local companies also learn so that in the future, uh, we are going to have companies from within who can actually work on this themselves and not as sub subcontractors. Currently uh, in, our, in, in, in all investments, we have about 1,500 companies who are working at different levels. Some of them are working on services. Some of them are working on uh, uh, act, the actual doing of, of those projects. The other thing is provision of goods and services. In provision of goods and services, we don't have many goods in Tanzania that we can provide, but we are doing very well in infrastructure sector. So uh, things like cement, steel, 
and other things like uh, uh, mchanga, kokoto, and so on and so forth, we, we can provide. But we need to, to pull up our socks for other kind of products. Because if you want to, pro if you want to promote local content, we should be able to supply the goods that are needed uh, in those projects. Coming, coming to entrepreneurship. In entrepreneurship in Tanzania, we have uh, a, a good number of people who are involving themselves in entrepreneurship. And uh, our, we think that this is a one way of actually inclusive growth that we, we achieve in our country. Because uh, if people cannot be employed in formal employment, but they can, they can employ themselves through entrepreneurship, but they can also create employment for others. So the government is trying uh, its level best to, to have to, pro, to, pro, to provide a conducive environment for entrepreneurship in Tanzania by making sure that first of all they have uh, uh, they have spaces where they can work and they can uh, they have a easy way of getting uh, formalization of their businesses like getting TBS and so on and so forth. But not only that, the Tambulisho of Taifa introduced by our president is also a very good way step forward for formalization of entrepreneurship in Tanzania. We know uh, we have almost 3 million entrepreneurs. However, looking at the ones who are actually buying those Vitambulisho, we only have like halfway of them, but we, we will get there. The other good thing as a, on entrepreneurship as a formalization process is the introduction of special products for these, uh, for these entrepreneurs who are having Vitambulisho. So most of the financial institutions like banks, they now have special products for, for, uh, for any entrepreneur who is holding that uh, identity card. So we think that this is an improvement and also an easy way for them to access capital. And if you go to, to local government authorities where we have our coordinators, they actually register each entrepreneur with, with each identity card and their location. So we can track them. So that's why banks can actually give them loans because they know how to, they can reach them. But this, in the coming years, the government is looking at how to improve these identity cards by making sure that they have pictures, they have names, and they have their signatures and they can be linked to other uh, national uh, in, in systems such as NIDA and, and uh, as, as well as uh, TIN and et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I think we are making a very good progress uh, and I think in the near future, we'll be able to get a very good positive results if we continue with these interventions. Uh, on SGD5, the gender, gender one, the everything that I've talked about above, we are trying to make sure that we people are sensitive, people understand the importance of men and women as they are doing their, their businesses. So we've been to, we've been able to sensitize all programs, local content projects, and as well as access to finance for all empowerment funds, for example. We, 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 we tell them the importance of knowing the importance of men and women in whatever that they do. So we have a very good positive results. For example, on empowerment funds, when we started the gender awareness, we, women who were able to access loans were only 36%. But now we are talking about 68 to 70% of women accessing loans, which is a very good positive result. But we are trying as much as possible in all tools that we are tracking, we are able to track the, uh, the gender issues in local content, for example, we need to know how many women were employed, for example, in SGR, how many men were employed in SGR, and so on and so forth. And how many women and men accessed the loans through banks, through empowerment funds, and how many women we have in, as entrepreneurs and so, and so on and so forth. This is very important for, for making sure that everybody is involved and we're actually achieving inclusive growth in our country. Thank you very much for listening to me. 
That was really, really good. Asante sana, Mama Bengi. So I love listening to you because all the time you come up with these numbers. So it's not just, you know, like we are doing this, but where and how. Um, I like the way you broke down the local content bits. It's one thing to say we want to see people involved, but then it's something else for you to really tell us how you capture uh, this data. And I'm really happy that you're bringing the issue of data. Um, uh, Stephen, uh, so through his high level presentation, um, kind of implied like it's very important that we are tracking all of this. The one thing that also takes a lot of time, and I think Maeda and also um, Wajuma, in a way, when you're making presentation, is just to think about um, the data that we have or not. Like when Steve was saying, these are the areas we are doing well. Perhaps we're doing well because we have the data. Or perhaps we could have been doing, if we didn't have the data, we could have said otherwise. And I think um, uh, having data um, that is re readily available, you know, on time, uh, measuring the indicators that we're looking for, capturing the gender differences, capturing the location uh, differences is also very, very important. So Mama, really, thank you so much. You touched on a lot of things. Most of them, I'm gonna group them around uh, local content, but for you, local content means a lot more than just um, um, being able to engage in these big projects. But at the end of the day, how you assist uh, more and more Tanzanians actually uh, to formalize their businesses. And I think that is a commendable job and it needs to be done more intensively. I know some members who have seen uh, in the chat group are doing this and I congratulate all of you. Um, well, it takes a village, I guess it takes a country to really see progress in all these SDGs. And I think what I'm liking a lot from the discussion that is going on right now, everything is related to Tanzania. So in as much as, um, and I like what Steve said during his presentation, that we started with the MDGs, it was um, you know, uh, coming from the top, but this one, you can really feel how uh, we are able to relate at the lower level. So thank you very much, Mama Bengi Issa, for that great, great, great um, uh, share with us. Uh, last but not least, I'm really thank happy- Thank you, Dr. Kilam. Asante Sana. We are really happy to have Badru um, with us. He looks young, but he has been working with companies. I'm really liking the experience of the, of, the, of the team that we have. So we have somebody who has worked with women, we've had the youth, and then with the National Economic Empowerment. Madru, over to you, Karibu Sana. We are all excited and we want to hear from you, Karibu. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Brandina, for this wonderful session. But I'm also honored to be part of this conversation where I'm able to meet my brother, uh, Reynard, but also Chacha. Uh, I'm also glad to meet my sister, Majuma, and our superwoman, uh, Mama Bengisa. So it's really an honor to me to join this uh, wonderful session, but also thanks to the organizers for, for putting this together. So by introduction, I'm Bad Rujuma Rajabu. I'm currently working with Restless Development uh, as a senior programmer coordinator responsible for Kijana Jibika project but previously worked with, uh, with the UN Global Compact and the UNDP, supporting businesses on how they can stream SDGs, but also report on their, on their progress. Yeah, so firstly, I just want to, to use this platform to share the experience on working with the, with, with the businesses, specifically the, the, corporate, the corporate sector in terms of uh, SDG implementation. So um, you'll agree with me uh, that uh, in terms of SDG implementation, the corporates are, are far away ahead in terms of uh, uh, implementation of this agenda. And this is due uh, to the fact that most of the corporate companies, they were involved from the initial processes of SDG, uh, 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 um, from the, 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 the official uh, uh, Badru, I'm losing you.
Badru, it looks like we are losing you. Um, Badru, can you hear me? I can ask you to switch off your video and then you can uh, continue with just audio. Okay, um, when we wait for Badru to come back, when Badru is back, kindly let me know. Um, or were you guys hearing him? I couldn't. Um, when we wait for Badru to come back, I'm going to peek. Um, Ntuli, Ntuli, I'm seeing a lot of your uh, conversation with uh, uh, Steve and together with Fatma. I think I will give you a minute to, um, to ask just one question. And then we will try and come back. Hope Badru by then you will be okay. I'm not sure what happened to Badru. Um, and Tuli, I'm going to give you a flow to let us open up your mic. Yes, good morning. A very good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Um, so my name is Ntuli Momukonda and I am the programs manager at the Doris Molo Foundation. Uh, we are a CSO that works towards uh, implementing um, implementing uh, or, or rather ensuring um, the, the survival of premature babies within Tanzania. We work on a national level. So my question goes towards specifically towards um, the Tanzania Sustainable Development Platform. Uh, working towards this sort of um, entity, how does this ensure that various CSOs throughout their individual work get uh, recognized for the input that they actually provide towards ensuring the SDGs are attained or rather achieved on a national level? You see, as, as CSOs work individually, does the platform ensure that this is a collective effort uh, strategically towards um, implementing implementing the SDGs on a national level? Let's say that we are working towards um, ensuring the survival of premature babies. How does that contribute on a, on a national scale towards the um, um, health sector? Yeah, something like that. Okay. Okay, no, that's really good. And I think uh, either Steve or, um, or uh, Reynald can respond to that. And I think that's a really good uh, question. And perhaps that's why we're having this dialogue because there are lots of things that are ongoing. Um, some of the things just like you've heard uh, Steve and, uh, and uh, Reynald say are being done on the state side, but quite a number of other things are being done by non-state actors. So I'm happy, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you can link up more with them uh, when they're having meetings, you can join and understand, you know, um, I'm sure there are lots of people with the different initiatives uh, with the tracking down the SDGs who are also in the group and, you know, the amazing work that you're doing. I'm sure um, there are quite also other people who are also working, not just on, uh, like for instance, you speak about the babies, but then you also have a lot of people working on reproductive health, because that's also an issue, not just for, let's say, uh, UN organization, but also local organizations are also doing that. So I think that's a, um, a, a good point. So at this point, unless we get Badru back, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up uh, and pick two or three hands. And truly, thank you so much for joining us. Thank, you, thank so you, much. you for speaking. Yeah, um, I'm going to pick two hands um, uh, to hear from them. Uh, if you have a question, if you want to tell us about the progress that you're making um, with regards to SDGs, uh, this will be your time. So Fatma, yes, you were up next after Antuli. So Fatma, let me allow you to uh, speak now. Okay, Karibu Fatma. Okay, um, uh, you're having a very low bandwidth, so I will say uh, don't use your video, just your audio. Please go ahead. Uh, I can still not hear you properly. Asante sana, Blandina. Great, I hear you now. Uh, yeah. Can you? 
Uh, I'm losing you again, Fatma. I'm not sure why I'm losing you. Fatma, onge pole pole. Just just speak a little bit slower. It looks like your network um, is not stable. When you speak slower, yes, but then it's dragging a little bit more. Um, try again. We'll try one more time and then that's a bit. I'm sorry. Fatma would have really loved to hear from you, but uh, we cannot hear you. Okay. Uh, Fatma, you can come back uh, again. I don't know why we're not we're not able to hear you, unless other people can hear you, but I can't. All right. No. Okay. So next up, if I butcher your name, do forgive me. Edenamiuki. Uh, uh, please, no, that's that's amazing. Um, very well pronounced as well. Um, my name is Eden Amyuki. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. Okay, Karibu. Um, I, it, it's been amazing listening in, um, kind of really understanding what has been going on in Tanzania in terms of the SDGs. Um, I, I come from a, 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 a sports and dance community. I come from a break dance community, and I'm really here asking for some advice on how to are we losing you hello uh i come into the space to gain some advice on how to best implement what we're currently working on um we're com currently working and pushing towards formalizing um breakdowns as a sport as it's been recently introduced by um the olympics um and this has been a tool to support youth development, um, to support other inequalities in Tanzania. And we're looking at how to formalize it um, at national level. Um, you know, other countries have, have, have interesting models that we've learned from, but really struggling to, to get it to the top of the food chain and wondering how that might the best approach, um, if anyone could help and advise on. Um, we, we're currently, this year, we're looking at delivering a national league. Um, we've already delivered one in um, Arusha already, and we'll be looking at other, other parts of the countries with a, a finals in, in Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. um, really, you're looking at it as a, as a prototype towards the 2024 Paris Olympic. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. No, I, I think uh, that's an interesting one. I'm not sure if you're still talking or you're done. I'm done. Hello? You're done, okay. No, that, that's an interesting one, especially because you've heard, uh, for instance, when Majuma was saying the kind of assistance they provide to women um, in, through the Women Chambers of Commerce, there is a lot of formalization that is done there. I am sure um, if you speak to her, she can refer you to other members. So, while you must sorry, I'm not giving you women business women, but we have. Um, uh, I'm not going to call you young. We have now. I can't say your name again. Uh, I'm sure you can link up with Mayuma. Um, if you can, I'm going to put my email on the chat box. Uh, if you can reach out to us, and that we can link you up to Mayuma, and she can give you uh, some guidance. Now, when it comes to SDGs. Um, not surprisingly, when we were doing the second five-year development plan, creative um, um, uh, industry was thought through. And from what I've heard from uh, Steven, you feel like it's still there. And this, I think, is a plus. And you can see also from his presentation, technology uh, is given quite um, 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 a space, meaning also quite a lot of other things. Uh, um, uh, are seen not in the normal way that we're used to. And I think with that, that is great progress. But as you challenge it, 
is like really how do you really come on board and start trucking it's one thing to say people are moving out of poverty it's something else to say no hunger it's something else to say there is no inequality it's something else to say we having gender equality but then importantly how can we really involve and i think um um Wajuma, if she's there i put you on the spot i will ask you um again uh, to respond uh to 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 uh uh, to the gentleman who asked that question. Um, if there are more questions, uh, I would be more than happy to give you a floor if you would like to ask a question to our members of panel and especially our keynote address, uh, um, uh, our keynote speaker, that would be great. Or if you want to share your experience also, you're welcome to do so. Uh, you can raise your hand. I, I can only pick you when you raise your hand, otherwise I can't see that. So Karibuni, if you have a question or you want to share your experience, that will be uh, will be really good. Yes, I'm seeing two hands. So we will start with uh, Daniel. Um, Fatma, we're going to try again. I'm going to start with you just trying if I can get you to speak. Uh, Fatma, try. Yeah, hi, Blendina. Yes, now we can hear you. And then Daniel yeah. will be next. Yes. All right, I'm so sorry. Actually, I'm coming from the field, so the network wasn't really good. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, so my name is Fatma Fungo. I'm working with Kiona Youth Coordinates. Uh, we have an, uh, an office, a head office in Tanga, but we're working uh, nationally with other partners. Uh, we're trying to ensure that implementation of the SDG is in alignment to empowerment of the young people in socioeconomic development um, and sexual reproductive health and rights for adolescent girls and young women, particularly and HIV prevention. So um, my, my, my major concern with, uh, with uh, the National Youth Development Policy, I think I posted that in the chat, uh, chat room, and um, I was trying to see how we can um, we can ensure the implementation of the um, of the national youth development policy for 2007, and uh, actually uh, engage more young people into the review process. But as well as also uh, some of the um, some of the uh, uh, acts that have, have come from the national youth development policy. Uh, like the National Youth uh, National Youth Council, which implementation is still lagging behind, I think it could be a better pr platform for the young people to be able to uh, be involved in different decision-making organs, to be able to have um, a, a development uh, process that includes the young people's generation ideas, and um, of course, uh, driven by them as well. But also the, uh, the last concern will be, um, I've heard uh, Mama Bengi and she's been uh, speaking uh, so much about um, how much uh, they've been able to, to empower the youth, uh, especially in regard to the SDGs. And yes, we have seen uh, most of her work. Congratulations, Mama. Um, but again, uh, 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 my major concern was how to, how to ensure um, the integration of the multi-sectoral, actually multi-sectoral integration, especially uh, in issues related to youth. For instance, we have um, the PRAG implementing the uh, Youth Development Fund from the local government. Um, but again, there are a lot of challenges happening already uh, with the uh, formation of, of the entrepreneurship groups and how to access young people for the for, for the uh, to access the the financial support, but also even the mentorship and coaching for these young people, as well as capacity development and especially intergenerational capacity development. Now, how do we, as the partners, now leveraging the 17th goal 
uh, partnership for the goals as the partners, uh, as from the CSOs, but again, people from the government and of course from the development partners. How do we all uh, join hands in this and making sure that we really uh, put so much effort in, into the young people uh, so that they can really access, access this uh, financial support, but as well as the intergenerational capacity development to be able to sustain their businesses, as well as mentorship and coaching for, for marketing access uh, by leveraging the digital economy already right now. Santa Sana Plantina. Thank you uh, for that uh, great uh, insight, but also there was also um, a question there. So, I think two bits. So the first bit, I think, uh, and I see, I see also Reynald, maybe he can respond to you back. Um, oh, Reynald, should I give you the flow? Because you wrote the answer on the chat room, and the question that she had about the mix as to how you ensure uh, you're engaging the youth, but then it's importantly when you're engaging them, they are aware of the policy itself, so the approach. Reynald, I'm going to give you the floor so that you can respond to her, but then the other bits we can discuss a little bit uh, um, uh, on the other side. Uh, Reynald? Um, um, okay. You're on? Yes, please. Yes, I'm on. Um, thank you. Um, um, the issue about um, engaging or getting meaningful uh, participation from young people when they yeah. uh, when they when they are not aware of you know the policies it's the point of the policy itself that's i think that is one of the biggest challenges we we also face uh, but uh, the policy has been around from 2007 and we got in during the review process so what we do is um, we mix the two we mix the creation of, of awareness but also you know uh, organized youth driven youth-led uh, national uh, uh, dialogue policy dialogues like in 2019 um, 18 and 17 we've organized uh, you know youth policy uh, uh, dialogues towards, uh, you know, the formulation of the new policy. So, but to ensure we get quality recommendations, we work with youth networks. So youth networks that work, already do the work with uh, young people at the community uh, level. So that's who we engage when we get to the uh, level of now actually wanting uh, understanding what the priorities are of young people uh, in the communities and what the, um, you know, the concerns and the priorities and what should be the recommendations. So for instance, the group that uh, the ministry, you know, advised us because now it's a, it's a government led process. So we work with uh, university students. We work with uh, Shibia Wata for young people uh, living with disabilities. We work with um, young people in the diaspora. Uh, so this one we did uh, online consultations. Uh, we also worked with young people who are in the workforce because there's this misconception if you're young and you just have a job, then you don't have problems. So we looked, other stakeholders did uh, unemployed youth, but we, we engaged, uh, young people who are employed, just trying to see what challenges and what concerns they have from the employment uh, sector and what recommendations should be in the uh, youth policy. So what we do is that, but also uh, just mixing the two and working with uh, young people who are already uh, understand the concerns and the issues because they work directly with uh, uh, youth groups. But uh, if, if you allow me, uh, the last bit, uh, Fatma asked, uh, uh, I think there's elements that I would like to clarify. First, the youth fund is not with uh, Pearlard, it's with the Ministry of Youth at the Prime Minister's office. What the 10% is a loan, it, they're loans. And uh, these are what are at uh, the Pearlard. Uh, the formation of groups, as I, uh, I touched earlier, 
this was one of our concerns. We, we did a study with, in 17 districts uh, that we worked in, and uh, we presented uh, recommendations to Tamisemi. And uh, recently, a new amendment of the reg regulations uh, uh, ha has come out, and what a few of our recommendations were taken on board. First is the formation of groups from 10 people to uh, five, at least five, which is a great, uh, it's a plus. Uh, 10 people are too many. And uh, if Fatma, I know she, she works with young people and that it was a big complaint, but also for people living with disability, uh, it's from uh, 10 also to only two. So now the new, uh, the amendments for people with disability, including young people, it's only uh, two, you need to have just two, uh, two people in the group with uh, flexibility to just one person in order to access uh, the loans. But also other challenges uh, on that, including uh, how to create constitutions because they're required to make constitutions, they're required to have you know, a business plan. So in the guidelines that we were developing with Tamisemi, uh, we, we recommended, and there are templates that were not there for the constitutions for the groups and a template for business plan, for how to make a bit simple business plan uh, to present to the LGAs. So these are some of the challenges that, and solutions that we've been able to get from uh, youth-driven uh, uh, processes. So uh, uh, Fatma, uh, I'm welcoming you. We can have uh, more, uh, you know, discussions. Please, you're welcome. I can. I, I will also leave my email at the chat box. You will feel free to contact me so we can see uh, how we can collaborate on this. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, uh, before I call uh, Odax, I saw you on the chat room. There's. I mean, I saw you on the list of participants. There is a question that's directed to you. Um, if you're you're still there, I'd be more than happy to ask Simon to ask you the question. But then importantly, um, I think Simon wants to understand, um, you know, it's a really big question what he's asking, because he wants to understand how actually we're capturing the progress that is made in the, in the, in the agriculture in terms of uh, youth and also women. Um, but then again, also in the chat room, do access um, some work that is undertaken by Palette for Development, uh, where they are also doing fundraising activities. There is a link there shared by Emmanuel. Uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, for all those interested, kindly do feel free uh, to um, attend. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my members of the panel. Um, OK, I'm seeing Badru coming back in. I hope he is uh, uh, strong and we can hear him. Um, Badru Polesana, and welcome back. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Blandina. Sorry for the inconvenience called, so I had to it's, change it okay. first. OK, Karibu, please. Uh, you yeah, have the so, flow, and then I have Sophia. Sophia, after Badru, I'll pick you. Karibu, Badru. Yeah, so just to start where I left, I uh, just want to remind uh, my colleagues and whoever is, has joined today, like we are in the UN Decade of Action. And uh, we call the UN, of, UN Decade of Action because we are looking forward to see how the world is accelerating sustainable solution to all the challenge that we are facing today. Uh, but also just to echo from where uh, my brother church had left on the progress of the goals, uh, SDGs, I just wanted also to, to echo that um, during the 2019 Venara uh, process, we happened to, as the country, to review uh, around six goals. And we looked at the quality education, which is goal four. We looked at uh, decent work and economic growth, uh, reduced inequalities, protecting the planet, peace and justice, and, and as well as partnership for, for the goals. So those were the only goals that uh, at the country uh, uh, we submitted uh, to the world leaders during the UN General Assembly and the High Level Political Forum. Uh, however, having said that, uh, uh, 
it, it was a gradual process that involved all the different stakeholders where we saw the civil society came up with a report with the leadership of uh, my brother Reinhard and, and, and Stephen Chacha, as well on my side with the UN Global Compact, we supported the, the business uh, report, SDG report that was also part of the, the Venara uh, processes. However, there are some uh, similar challenges that uh, in terms of progress that we all have uh, uh, came up with and, 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 and uh, even church had already mentioned we are looking at uh, goal number uh, we are looking at goal number number 1 on, on poverty climate action life on water but also life on land and partnership so these were the goals media that uh, we would not report on but also these are the goals that we are not doing well and specifically uh, we are lacking enough data how to track uh, these the progress of these goals However much we have stakeholders working on, on all these areas, but currently the, there's no uh, available data that is in place. And to me, uh, this is the place where I would call upon uh, different stakeholders, including uh, think tanks, uh, uh, to help uh, to visualize the available data that can show the progress of all th these goals. But also, uh, uh, something also important to mention on is that the SDG emphasizes the importance of interlinkages and integrated nature of sustainable development, uh, acknowledging the possible synergies, but also looking at trade-offs between sustainable development goals and targets. And this is where you find like stakeholders, like businesses, uh, uh, CSOs and institution, uh, policymakers and other stakeholders, including development partners coming to perspective to see how they can streamline uh, SDG implementation, but also be able to report on their progress. Uh, but also in terms of reporting, uh, something like uh, I would love to, to also mention is that uh, uh, from the business perspective, we have the Tanzania Sustainability Portal, where businesses are encouraged to go and submit their works, but also civil societies. But also in terms of civil society and the government, there's also a reporting portal. I think Chacha, if, if given another opportunity, would also mention about the portal that uh, he's championing uh, that will also support SDG reporting. Uh, but also learnings, but, but but also something also I can I can buy and I can share as an experience is that um, when it come to SDG implementation, the business perspective and the CSO side, uh, the the CSO they are proactive, they are aware of the SDGs, and uh, they are creating synergies. However, they are lacking resources. Something that is uh, different in terms of the businesses. The, the businesses they are not in good touch with their communities but they have resources. So this is an area that we can try to see how we can strike the balance between CSOs, uh, different stakeholders and businesses, and they can really support in terms of uh, supporting SDGs uh, financing. Okay, that's a really good point, a really good point. Uh, people with resources don't know the people who are at the grassroots and the other way around. Um, um, you have another point that you want to raise, Badru? Uh, I just wanted to 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 raise an, an, an a last point just because okay, we have time. I, I just want to make sure that, um, however, we've we've all mentioned a lot of good work that is being done in terms of implementing SDGs, uh, but there's lack of clarity about the role of uh, non-state actors, not only among the policymakers but also among the community of non-state actors. And in the UN Decade of Action, uh, we see there's an opportunity to see how we can reflect upon uh, the role of different actors by appreciating what they are doing, but also by reporting and taking measure of what is being done by all these actors. Thank you so much, Dr. Blandino. All right, uh, thank you, really. This is really good. I'm, I'm, I'm liking this SDG um, uh, um, discussion because it's like we continue to talk and then we have a lot of discussion uh, the chat uh, box really steve uh, you've been amazing you're answering a lot of uh, questions in the chat room and we thank you for that so what i'm going to do is i will pick uh, sophia because i'm seeing your hand i've seen your hand for a while i'm gonna uh, let you uh, ask your question and um i had asked requested um odax to say something so if uh, odax you want to say something and then i go back to my speakers and wrap it up Sophia, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks, Blandina. And I'm really glad I've been uh, 
involved in, I mean, a part of this dialogue, it's really good to see the conversations that are going around, especially, I think, the work and the different uh, youth initiatives uh, that, are, that, are, that we have uh, in, in Tanzania. So I have actually two questions, sorry. My first one is, I think, more or less a bad Drew, I can't, I wouldn't say he answered it, but I think he said, maybe I think Stephen, I, I want to just clarify whether that portal has been established or then the process of developing the portal where you can find all this data on the SDGs and also be able to follow up on the progress of, of, of the SDGs. But maybe if there's also any, if there are any reports maybe so far or any links that uh, they can provide on where we can access information on reports um, that have been uh, written so far on the progress of the SDGs. And then my second question is, um, around in terms of I think some of the goals as well and the strategies that the country has in place to get this around competitiveness of manufacturing and also knowing that Tanzania one of the things uh, one of the plans as well is development plans is industrialization uh, of, of the country. I want to, to ask in terms of building especially I think this has to do with uh, issues of maybe youth unemployment. Are there any plans to develop or how much investment is the government going to make in developing skills at that technical level in terms of technical mm. school or vocational uh, training with regards to building capacities of of uh to build the capacities skills and capacities uh of 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 a workforce that be able to to what you call it to to work in the manufacturing uh sector but also in industries to drive that uh government plan for industrialization and also increasing competitiveness in the manufacturing sector. So I don't know, maybe should I direct that question then at Mama Bengisa? Yeah, yeah. Or I, I was already yeah. going to say that. I'm like, ah, Mama Bengisa, there's a question for you. So really, thank you so much. Um, and I thank you all uh, for uh, those great um, uh, questions and insights and comments, really the active people in the chat room. So what I'm going to do is uh, Badru, um, I, I, I will get your final words and then I'm going to go to Mama Bengisa and then I'll come to Rena and then um, Mwajuma and I will finish with our keynote speaker. So Badru, if you have final words, if you don't, it's... Um, yeah, so thank you so much, Dr. Blandina. Uh, my yes, final words would be like, uh, when you talk about SDGs, we tend to assume uh, either it's... Uh, it's a new concept that we don't know, but we should mm -hmm. remind us that we are talking about the UN decade of action. We're supposed to talk about action and how we can accelerate the implementation. Instead of going back to SDG awareness, because when you start oh. awareness, we shall lag behind. Thank you so much. All right, that's fantastic. Great words. I go to Mama Bengisa, please. Karibu, Mama. Thank you, Blandina. I didn't get the question. Can, can you please... Uh... Summarize it for me. Uh, okay, so um, when Sophia was making a presentation, she asked for two things. The first one, if there was a platform for information, but then the question for you was pretty much, do you um, have a plan or a strategy to create super skills, um, like to develop super skills so that a lot of things that you said in the local content, um, they can actually be available in the country? That's what she was asking. That's the super summary of okay. that question. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, there, are, there is a national skills development program, which is under Prime Minister's Office Ministry responsible for labor, youth and employment. And uh, that skills development program focuses on uh, uh, build, building up of skills. It, it actually, it, it sponsors youth uh, in a number of programs. Uh, first of all, they, they, uh, it sponsors youth at VETA. So about 30,000 youth, uh, uh, 30, youth per year are sponsored to take VETA courses. But it also gives sponsorship through Bos Bo John Bosco, uh, which is also a vocational uh, college. Then there is a, another program under the same ministry, which is responsible for agriculture. Uh, which actually focuses on building up uh, uh, greenhouses in every local government authority. I think you've seen greenhouses in local government. So youth are taught 
how to build those greenhouses and how to maintain them. Uh, and that problem has, uh, actually it has a multiplier effect because even some of the wards have, have started to, to allocate their own funding and they put up a structure for greenhouses. Another mm -hmm. program for skills development is the internship. In, there is a national internship program, which is under Tanzania Educa Employment Service Agency, TAESA, which is here in Dar es Salaam. Their main role is to, to link youth who graduated from the universities within the last five years. So they are linked to companies that, and they, are, they can work in the company, not only company, then ministries, is, the government institutions, civil society organizations, and also companies. What you need to do is just to apply to the TAESA that I need uh, some interns, maybe I need 10 interns, then TAESA will allocate you those students and they will pay themselves. They mm -hmm. normally pay them 150,000 shillings per month. And you can stay with the youth for one year. And if you need them, then you can employ them. That program is also very big and we have, uh, we have connected them as well to the, all these projects here, uh, we, the, uh, the strategic projects that are implemented by the government. So we want also youth to participate in those projects under that uh, program so that they get skills on, on the areas that they need, in, uh, uh, they need to learn. The other program is the apprenticeship, which is also uh, linking uh, youth in various institutions. And it has also reached out to many youth in Tanzania. And the last program is a prior recognition of prior uh, experience. For example, there is a youth or any, any, any person who has technical skills, but didn't go to school to get that skill. So they're, they're being recognized and given certificates. So these are the type of programs that are put in, that the government has put in place to, to raise up skills. But the other thing that we do as a government, we have introduced entrepreneurship in, in, in education system. So from the primary level to higher level, higher learning ed, uh, education, we, we, we expect them to train entrepreneurship so that to raise skills in different areas other than the you know normal skills that is requested from the from the course that one one is taking so uh, in some of the in entrepreneurship although is different uh, some of the schools they've they've put up as a subject some of the schools have mainstreamed in a, in a, in skills uh, in a, in a certain subject so that uh, two people can learn but at the university level there are some of the universities they train entrepreneurship in every course, but there are some of the universities that take an entrepreneurship as a different subject, and they, they put up a club for entrepreneurship and you know uh, things like uh, incubation centers, whereby they they teach them entrepreneurship as well as uh, nurture their ideas so that they can they can implement whatever that they are they want to implement. So these are the uh, few programs that the government have put together on skills development. Thank you. All right. Uh, that's really, really good. Uh, Sante Sana. Um, I, I think this one on the super skills, um, it should be something Ambayo Mama Bengi definitely uh, will be working towards. So um, next up, uh, Rainland. Karibu Sana. You guys have been active, um, um, you know, answering quite a number of questions. Rainland, Karibu. Um, thank you. Uh, should I just give my uh, last words? Or oh, yes, I... uh, last words, last words. If you last manage words. to answer a question, that's okay. But I don't think we have time to answer yes. most of the questions. Yes, so your last words will be great. Okay. Um, uh, thank you. Um, first, this was quite um, an active and very participatory you know, dialogue. Uh, I would like to thank you, Dr. Kilama, and uh, the organizers for putting this together and letting us you know, share our experiences uh, with everyone. Uh, my last words will be um, echoing what Badu has said, the fact that we are already in the decade of action. These are like um, 10 years 
like the last 10 years of the SDGs. So the years of action, for action. So even for act, you know, all the actors and stakeholders, there's a sense of urgency that we need to adapt. You know, we need to move with the pace uh, that is required because the five years have already, uh, uh, are already done. So even our dialogues and our discussions need to be more advanced. We need to be discussing what has worked and what is working and what should we elevate in order to, to, to achieve the, the SDGs by 2030. So my last, uh, my, my, my words will be call, a call for action for all actors. But um, also Tanzania, we are in the last five years of the vision, vision for development 2025. So this is an interesting time also entering the five year development plan three. We need to be more active in engaging with that because it's new and for the first time there will there is um i'd say increased uh, participation participation and inclusion of stakeholders in the process to develop the the five-year development plan three so i hope steven will touch about it uh, in his closing remarks so there's also um time to involve all stakeholders in review of the Vision 2025 in the next five years, but also interesting times ahead to see what we come up with for our next uh, development vision. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, really, really, thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, and as you can say, I, I'm, I'm hearing the word inclusion coming up, coming up, and I think it's an important word when to think about um, um, uh, the the SDGs, but then importantly at the national level when we think of the FYDP2 and then when we think about the vision 2025. Um, so next up, uh, Mwajuma, you're up next. Uh, Karibu sana. Um, you can answer any other question or your final words. Karibu, Mwajuma. Uh, oh. Okay, I have a feeling we lost her, so I come to our keynote uh, speaker. Uh, Steve, over to you. Looks like we just lost Mwajuma. Yeah, um, thanks, Kamina. So what I'd like to say um, is the fact that globally, um, we are lagging behind on the SDGs implementation. Um, and again, with these ongoing challenges of COVID and everything, is even you know, taking us further back um, in realizing, um, you know, these goals. Um, you know, the decade of action was launched before even COVID. So you can imagine the agents that was there uh, when the you know, decade of action was actually launched and the agent that is there now, um, you know, with COVID in place, um, you know, and everything else that is actually happening. Um, and one thing which is very clear about this agenda, um, this agenda is for everyone. Um, and we no longer, as civil society organization, have the luxury of sitting on the other side of the fence and you know pointing fingers um, that the government is not doing it or is doing that in all of that. We also are accountable um, um, on this, and that's why um, the UN reporting mechanism, even in the VNR um, you know system, requires also civil society to document and report what is it that we're doing in the implementation and realization of this assembly forming goals. So we are also equally responsible um, for the realization of these goals you know, going forward. Um, I think uh, locally there are um, a lot of opportunities. Um, I think the government has been very supportive um, of mass stakeholder engagement. Um, the new relaunch um, SD coordination framework, I think is a, you know, is a, is a big step forward in mass stakeholder engagement in the country around the SD implementation. Um, I think it's, it's really up to us. Um, we have already been given a seat on the table it's really up to us as stakeholders and actors to really be able to utilize it and make meaningful contribution, you know, um, to it. And I'm saying this, you know, partly responding um, um, to the question from a colleague from um, the Small Foundation. Um, the main challenge that we have within the civil society organization, we do not track the implementation of the work that we do. We do not have data of the work that we do. We don't have um, good quality data that can document the impact of the work that we do. Um, I and mean, we saw that challenge when we were doing um, or compiling a civil society VNR report 
um, you know, when we wanted to track um, progress in different areas, we realized actually civil society organizations do not capture data at all. Um, so that's uh, another significant you know, shortcoming that we have in the sector. Um, and going forward, we really need to look into ways to improve our data collection mechanism and um, tracking of indicators in each and everything that we are actually doing and to align them um, um, with the national development you know, plans that are ongoing. So in the process of actually developing the five development plan three, we are trying to address some of these challenges. And even the National Bureau of Statistics itself, um, in the new Tanzania Master Plan that is under the way, um, they're also trying to integrate new sources of data, such as data from civil society organization um, to be used as, you know, as complementary data to official statistics. So there are a lot of opportunities for all of us. Um, um, I think it's just a matter to ensure that we, we utilize these opportunities rightly. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Stephen, for those great uh, insights and true um, no data, it's very difficult for you to talk. And I like what you finished up towards the end, uh, even the opportunity that is existing there, whereby we say you can use the data uh, for analysis later on, but it's important then you really use um, the standards that are required. So yes, there are lots of opportunities out there that we can learn. Um, so I would thank everybody in the chat room. You guys have been really amazing. Um, and anyone, as we go to the wrap up, I encourage you to very quickly go through the chat and see quite a number of questions that were asked there and answered. Uh, please, uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to welcome uh, Pascaline to give us the wrap up. Pascaline, welcome. Thank you very much, um, Blandina. Um, I would like to, to start by thanking you uh, for moderating this panel um, and also Hadija Omari for organizing this panel, all the project partners, of course, our partner IMED, TAPRI, and uh, the European Union for its funding, as well as the, the Ministry for, of Finance and Planning, who is the contracting authority of the project pilot for research and dialogue. It's been an amazing workshop and panel, uh, really with a lot of interaction. I'd like also to thank the speakers and the panelists for their uh, very uh, interesting inputs. It's been really interactive and uh, really um, uh, giving a lot of food for thoughts on the questions of SDGs. So we've started with a very comprehensive and interesting presentation from Stephen about SDGs uh, as a global phenomenon, but also as uh, one important um, uh, action here in, the, in the Tanzania. Um, he's been reminding us that uh, the, the SDGs uh, came from maybe more a top-down approach to more uh, bottom-up uh, um, action. He's been explaining more about the high political forums like the Tanzania Parliamentary Group on Sustainable Development and all the SDGs champions um, uh, involved in these, uh, in these forums and actions like the Tanzania um, also group on SDGs. And uh, he's also uh, mentioning the importance of the dialogue with civil society. Uh, and as mentioned by the other panelists uh, of the importance of the involvement uh, of the different stakeholders and the multi-stakeholders engagement, including, and as reminded by Badru, of the private sector in the implementation of the SDGs. We've been through a lot of ideas. Also, we reminded the question of the different my, the dimensions of sustainable development, including the economic, the social, and the environmental aspects, which are all equally important. Uh, we've been through the important achievements uh, through policies and also the ways forward. Um, the panelists have been really impressive in uh, presenting um, how they were um, grassroots champions of the SDGs with the um, inputs from Mayuma, but also Reynold and, uh, and Badru. Uh, the, the idea of uh, a restless action and restless development from Badru is very uh, interesting as uh, we all know that uh, SDGs action is, is a bit restless uh, as it covers many topics. And the panelists um, have mentioned the, the the, the additional SDG, which is the one to leave no one behind, uh, which is a, a, an important part of the uh, mainstreamed SDGs. 
um, but also the importance of um, youth inclusion in further dialogue and um, the question of um, gender equality and climate and also their links with the future policies on, and, and plans on industrialization. Finally, um, and that was uh, interesting, um, the, some, and also that was reflected in the chat, the idea that we need uh, maybe more data indicators, but that's also that there are only nine years left uh, to reach 2030, uh, so that there is an urgency in the speed of implementation and uh, Badru's call for action um, uh, on, on SDG. So of course, um, this is just a, a really incomplete uh, wrap up, but um, I hope that uh, the, the report uh, and the and the, of the and the um, um, record of of this uh, this panel can uh, can bring more highlights. Um, I just would like to recall that the project um, a pilot for research and dialogue is here to uh, promote the dialogue, but also to promote more research and dissemination of research on a number of um, uh, topics. Uh, so we are we were really pleased to to organize this uh, this panel together with you. There will be another one which will follow up on the thirty first of March, which will be more on youth. Um, and i um, finally, um, I, I would like to take the opportunity to welcome. Avida Malheu, who's the National Authorizing Officer from the Ministry of Finance and Planning, who would maybe like to, to, to address to the audience for, for a couple of minutes. Thank you very much. And thank you for organizing this. Thank you so much, uh, Pascaline. Uh, Vida, uh, we are happy that we have uh, uh, you from the government, and uh, it will be nice to hear from you. Uh, Karibu sana for a word. You're welcome, Vida. Okay, sure, you can use your mic alone, it's fine. Um, Apparently, I cannot uh, hear you. Uh, Vida? We're going to try once Hello? more. Yes, now we can hear you. Yes, hi. Yes. Okay. Karibu. Hi, hi, yes. hi, hi. Technology issue. Thank you. As well said, my name is Vida from the Ministry of Finance and Plan. I'm so happy to see this ongoing dialogue. It's like my baby and I'm so excited. Uh, when contracting this uh, dialogue, we are thinking how are we going to connect them during this uh, COVID outbreak as it we were planned to have like dialogue in the physical meeting. But thanks to God technology help us. As a recipient of this grant, as well as beneficiary, we are trying to ensure that the contract, all the projects contracted are uh, aligned with the national priority as for our national development pla uh, platform. Uh, by so it was the five-year development plan two, and they, they are well in, uh, integrated into sector strategy. And thanks to God, is, uh, it is under our ministry of finance and plan, of which we take through the economic and the fiscal issues. Uh, I have just very few remarks to today's discussion. Applaud uh, to all panelists and speakers. They did a very good job, and I'm so happy for that. As the ministry, as contracting authority as well, this project, it has come with the right place and the time. As we were worrying, uh, it was where it was um, a little bit late, but saying, Everything happened for a good reason. As you are all informed now, uh, the currently we are preparing the UTZ strategies for the year 2021 to 2027, of which we believe this policy 
brief and recommendation will be very important insight on the due course of implementation of the future project and program. So I believe a lot of good things have been talked. In particular, uh, the Mr. Steven, where I tried to provide a good link be between the SDGs and the national platform, bo both at Zanzibar and the mainland. So I believe uh, the outcome of these meetings, uh, when you prepare the briefs, will help us during the, the implementation of EUTZ strategies to assist us to go uh, in the right direction where the, the thought of both uh, private and the public are uh, taken on board. Also the five-year de development plan three, it is at, fi at the final stage of which you will get some good, good, good issues. We integrated them on the due course of our implementation and lastly, as everybody was aware, uh, last week there was a presentation of a national development plan by our minister, and the I mean the budget ceiling and which uh, the national de development plan was presented before. So the two, we believe, the outcome of this meeting as well will assist us uh, in identify and the. Uh, and preparing those uh, national plans. So this dialogue, we really, really appreciate it. And the way um, the speaker, the panelists discuss, it will help us a lot. And the, the objective, the overall objective of uh, this program, I see it is going to meet by almost 90%. Uh, I forecast this one. Okay, I don't have much to say because my my colleague you have spoken a lot of good issues. Thank. You. Thank you so much, you. Uh, Vida. That, that uh, means a lot uh, to uh, to the project, and it's good to know, um, as you rightly point out, we still have one more discussion that's going to be held uh, the thirty first of uh, March, Karibuni Sana, same time same venue but then the link will be shared for you to register so everyone i thank uh, the organizers from everywhere so we have of course we've seen pascaline but then we have elise emmanuel bram um bunny donati and Sh and sharil that he spoke uh, earlier and of course uh, all my other colleagues uh adija Derek and members from Kumile Media, and also we're having a rapporteur, Margaret Tonga. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks.